Hello everybody, again, um, this is part two of my uh, Elite Dangerous Starters Guide walkthrough thingamajig and um, it involves exploration in the Sidewinder. Uh, it's not quite exploration, ex exploration, it's more scanning planets but we pick out all the valuable uh, planets and um, you can make about 10 million an hour. Here we go, I'm going to do um, uh, outfitting for for the road to riches. So it's in outfitting. I hope they got all the stuff here. They did have last time I was here, but it looks like they've changed it now. Nicked a lot of the stuff for whatever reason. I don't know why if they keep changing it. Maybe just to I think variety is the spice of life. So basically, for exploration. You want your ship to be very light and to have the best frame ship drive you can get. So you don't, we're not going to shoot anything so you can get rid of these um, lasers. It takes a while for them to go. Um, all, the, all the weapons do is slow you down. Nobody's going to shoot you. And they reduce your jump range as well. And you'd be surprised, you know, like when, that, when I'm doing trading and missions and things, I never carry weapons. The only time I carry weapons is when I go looking for combat. Because if you've got weapons, you'll be tempted to shoot something. And if you're doing missions, um, then stopping to shoot somebody just wastes time and stops you from earning money. It's never worth it. Uh, right, so we're going to get rid of the kill warrant scanner. Don't need any utilities. So core internal, this is where all the stuff goes on. Right. Um, the power plant, I'll, I'll leave that for now, sorry. Um, thrusters, we want to go light now. Oop, wrong one, sorry. Browse shop. Uh, 2D is the lightest thrusters. Cause we're not, we don't need to run away from anybody or chase anything. Frame shift drive, we now want to be as best we can get. Hopefully a 2A, yep, there it is. you see the jump, this is the thing we're after here, jump range. We're going to get about 22 light years. We're nearly there already. Um, all these things now make small change. Life support can stay the same. Power distributor, has that changed yet? We can go lighter. No, it's still not A1. We want a D1 for lightness. Gives us a bit of a light year jump range. Sensors, we don't need to see so far now. Mysteriously, so D grade. So you can see it's gone up to 23. It's going to go down a bit because there are some other things we need to get. So that's it. Now we're into um, optional internals. So the shield generator, you want the minimum shield now. Or the lightest shield you can get. Sorry, the lightest shield. Lightest shield. So that was one tonne. A 1C by weave is 1.3. Sorry, I thought that'd be lighter. So we can stick with that. Sure, can we? Um, I might have to come back to that because it's a question of space. So I'll leave that there for now. Uh, right, here we go. One thing you need is a fuel scoop. The best you can get. Hopefully a 2A. There it is. All right. Uh... And what else do we need? Fuel scoop. Right, we need two scanners for our shop. And we want, we were down the bottom here, surface scanner, a detailed surface scanner. There's only a 1C. That's perfect. And then we want a advanced discovery scanner. That's in the stellar body scanners. There it is, 1C. So we've got our two scanners, we've got our fuel scoop, we've got our shields. You could use a 1C, but it's no advantage because it's a bit heavier. Um, that's it, our, our Sidewinder, we've now got a 21-year uh, jump range, so that's quite a lot. Uh, we need to do the um, fire groups again. So that's... Why is it going? Oh, it's on the right screen keep dropping my mouse. Right, here we go. 
fire groups. Right, we've got no weapons now. You could put your advanced discovery, uh, discovery scanner on number one, but I'm going to put it on two as a matter of convention, because other times you might want weapons and have the advanced discovery scanner. So again, the data link scanner you don't need. You could put that on two as well. It makes no difference. So they both go off together. Or you could put it in there like that. So just then you have to use your fire groups button to change from one to the other. So you see that on your main head up display. I can't show you just now. I don't think, can we? No. When it comes up in the head up display, whichever one's showing at the edge of that sort of circle thing is the one you got selected. So you press your fire groups button and um, it'll swap from one to the other if you have it like that. Right, to do this next stage, uh, we need some uh, out of game tools. So I'm just going to show you them. Uh, the first one is this Road to Riches tool. There's the uh, address up the top there, but I'll give you a link in the uh, description below the video. So um, just click on the link, this will come up. Uh, I think it comes up in regular mode, start, starting with like this. So you just put in where you are, LTT15574, get root. And then um, it uh, makes a list of systems and planets for you to go and scan. So it's the exact planets that you want to scan. So you go to this one and find planet number one and scan it. I'll show you what, how the planet numbering works. And then you go to this one and then find these planets and scan them. And that's it. So you just work your way through the list. Uh, you can also, if you do it in um, non-straight line, oh, sorry, in straight line mode, you can go from one place to another place. So you put it where you are at the moment. And then what you can do is um, there's uh, on the route to Colonia, there's a few stations along the way. And one of them is at about 4,000 light second a uh, light years from uh, where we are and so what you can do is fly out to there and then another uh, 10,000 uh, sorry another yeah t ten th you need 5,000 light seconds yes another thousand light light seconds um, that'll unlock one of the engineers because you got to get 5,000 light light years from start so I'm getting the units mixed up so um, I think this is it here. I seem to remember doing for. I think that's it there. That system there is one of the ones that has the station in it. And the only reason I say go there is because um, is repair facilities. So if you've messed up and done a bit of damage, uh, you can go in there and get repairs. Then do the the other thousand. Come back to the station if you have to, and then back to the uh, wherever to sell your data. The other tool is this one, and this is where I think it all started. Commander Becky posted this on the forum. So have a read of this and you can read some of the other comments um, below the uh, opening post. And um, she tells you what to do. There's some interesting things here, the ship builds. So you can link onto these to find out how to do them. What I'd recommend is you start in the side Sidewinder. I think we've got pretty close to her build. Um, then um, the next one you want, do it for about three or four hours until you've got at least 20 million in data. Come back and sell it and then find yourself a Diamondback Explorer and use that for the rest of it. That's the best ship for it by far. Um, I think, yeah, so carry on that for your, you know, in total you want to do about 30 hours. If you work through her list, that's all these ones here, it says the system and, and planets here. Um, you get about 300 million, which is enough to get Elite Explorer, which is quite handy because it means you can go to Shinra, to Desra and get cheap ships and get yourself a nice anaconda and do whatever you want or a nice python, do the engineers. Um, so that's uh, that's it, whichever one you, you, you use. So I'll show you, just show you how it works. I'm going to use uh, this, this one if I just do regular mode, get root. Oh, I haven't put start in yet. So we need to fly to there. So what we do, we copy that, just sort of wipe over the text. 
and then press Control V. You can't copy, unfortunately. Uh, sorry, Control C. And then you go to the game, open up the galaxy map, and instead of typing in the name, click in the grey box there and Control V. And it comes there. Go to it. Get the box. See, see what I mean? Sometimes you don't get the right box. That's the box. Difficult to click. That's it there. So, um, how many jumps? It's two jumps. So, let's just show you a couple of things before we go. Um, you want to put, we can't do it just now because our distributor's locked, so while we're on the landing pad, but you want to put four pips to engines and two to systems as soon as you take off. So I'm just going to launch now. How can we change that? Yeah, so do your pips. And um, what we're going to do is lock that in and take the power distributor offline. When the power distributor is offline, it still uh, operates, but um, it doesn't use any power. And you can't change anything until you put it back online. But we don't need to change anything. We've got no weapons, so we never need to change those pips. So just boost away from the station towards the um, destination. Right, so go to your uh, modules panel. Make sure your cargo hatch is offline as well. You just double click them to take them off. Power distributor, two clicks. And now you'll see that that's got no dot in the left hand um, column where the funny square brackets are. So, and the same with the cargo hatch. That's the only thing you need to take off. But you can, let's, let's go one further. We'll take our shields off as well because we don't need shields for this. We're not going to see anybody for ages. Not going to bump into anything. And all that, that, what those things do is they save power. Save power and make you run cooler, which is very handy for, for scooping. So I'm going to show you how to scoop uh, when we get to this next stop. So make sure you've got that mouse widget on, the dot in the middle of the screen. Remember, to, you do that in uh, controls, mouse controls, and it's the last one in the mouse, mouse widgets, switch it on. That's really useful for scooping. So, all we do, when we come come here, just move the dot outside the line, outside the that yellow line there. Uh, press your trigger, your secondary trigger, to work your um, advanced discovery scanner. So you're flying round the star, and then start pointing at the, the one you want to go. As soon as the fuel scoop's gone out, just engage your frame shift drive again. So you see we, we discovered 14 new astronomical objects with the advanced discovery scanner. You get a little bit of cash for that when you when you hand it in because we've got nothing at the moment. Unfortunately, you can't see how much data you've got. Yeah, take, taking the shields and power distributor offline to stop you from cooking when you scoop for too long. But we're, we're never scooping for very long, so it's, it's not such a problem. And a diamond bag, when you get that, runs really cool, so it's not a problem there either. So same thing, just put your dot outside the line. You might as well scoop while we're waiting. And uh, hold your advanced discovery scanner. As soon as you've, it's gone, um, as soon as it's honked, and you see that you've got 40 new objects, open up your system map. And we wanted planet number one. So here it is, number one. So when you've got a, a single star, that's planet one, that's planet two, that's planet three. That's that's planet 1A, B, 1B, 1C, 1D. So when we do the next system, you'll just see the numbering system, um, some other things that, you can do, that it does. So just select with this symbol. And it's behind us. So I'll loop round. fly towards it, full throttle until you got below 15 seconds and then engage, um, put 75% uh, throttle or put it in the blue zone, just fly towards it. Now if you look on the left hand side under where it says unexplored, 
says scanning and there's a funny symbol going around. As soon as you get that, you can go to zero throttle. You don't want to keep going because eventually you're flying to the planet. So now you see the blue writing, the scan's complete, we've got that. We're on to the next one. So we open up our uh, tool again, find the next system name, copy, oh, sorry, might work copy, but you have to control it, control V into the other one. Uh, where are we? See that one? No, that one. G, Galaxy Map. You, you can't paste there, unfortunately. Right, at the moment, you, when it's black, you can't do anything with that. You've got to wait till it's grey before you can either type or paste anything in there. So just click into the box, Control V, and uh, is, that, is that the right one? Scorpy. Get rid of that. We don't need that. Yes, that's the right one. So uh, go to it. Make sure you get the right box come up that that matches. And plot your route. How many jumps this time? About four jumps. So we do a bit of scooping along the way. To just point towards it. Frame shift drive. drive. So you see the scooping technique. Dead simple. And um, these scars all, stars all seem to be scoopable, but when you're somewhere else, there might be non-scoopable ones. So what you can do in your filter, uh, if you start running out of fuel, you find out you haven't got enough for the next jump, so keep an eye on that. But uh, if you go past two stars that you can't scoop, you're starting to run out of fuel. So then you need to take a diversion to one that is scoopable to fill up. So I'm just flying past this one, round the outside of that yellow line. So as soon as the fuel scoop's gone, even though it's complete, it won't go yet until we're out of range of the star. That's it, now you can jump. Yeah, so um, you might have to divert to a scoopable star just to fill up with fuel. And you need to keep your eye on the temperature. If you scoop for too long, your temperature will start to climb. And if it goes above 80, turn away from the star, fly away, fly away from it until the fuel scoop's gone off. Let your ship cool down and go back and have another go. That's probably the easiest way. I have done a, a more advanced uh, video on fuel scooping. If you search through my channel, it's probably about 20 videos back from now. I think it's called Guide to Fuel Scooping or something. Drive Explain some of the mechanics in there. Not very good video, but it's got some stuff in there. So here we come out at. I think this is the one that we've got to scan. So you can see this is dead simple. As I said, there's nothing to bump into, there's nobody to shoot you. Even if you come across anybody, they won't do anything. You can do it in open, you might meet somebody who's friendly. Uh, but when you go back to sell your data, um, don't do it in open. Because sure as eggs are eggs, somebody's going to kill you just for fun and you lose all the data and have to do it all again. The same thing, just flying around, that's it, once it's full. On to the next one. Drive charging. Right, it was planet A3 and A4. I'll show you on the system, that's probably easier. I've got to get there first. Same thing. So honk your advanced discovery. Sorry, should have done that at the last. Do it at every star. Fuel scooping complete. So just 
turning away you now. Then open up your... Don't open up your galaxy map while you're scooping. Just get... Put a scoop away first. Uh, your system map, I mean, sorry. Right, so now we've got two stars in this one. You can get two, three, four, anything. So that's star... Um, a. And that's star B. So that's A1, A2, A3. And that's planet... That, so there we go. A, 1, A. B, C, so A1, B, A2, A, A2, B, if there was one there. And this is this bit here means that those two planets are orbiting each other as well as orbiting the star. That's quite useful because it means they're both together and you can scan them nearly at the same time. Uh, another thing you get, sometimes the, uh, the string of planets is shared by two stars so it's two stars but like one string down there in which case there'll be a b one so you get a b one a b two a b two a and and so on that's the that's the coding system for them so we wanted um uh three and four i think it was uh let me just check uh four and five so that's four. So I'm, I'm going to leave these for now. I just want to show you these ones. So let's let's go over there. So just do all the ones in the list. So same procedure. Just fly to the maximum throttle until you get 15 seconds, and then put your throttle in the blue zone. The, the thing about these two is they're going to be close to each other. So I'll just show you the how to do it in a minimum time. That's if I don't get distracted and forget to put my drop in the blue zone like I normally do. So I normally scan them in sequence, but after you've done it a bit, a bit, you might figure out some quicker ways to do it. So getting close now. Right, that'll do. Now, one of those planets is closer than the other, and um, the one I've selected is already selected, but I can't select the other one until the I'm close enough. So this time, I'm not going to stop too quickly. I'm flying on while I'm scanning. So you can see the two ones now, but I can't click on the other one directly. It's there. Whoops. Lost my throttle. So I've got the one now. So you've got to be careful. Throttle in the blue zone. And as soon as that's... There we go. Now I can throttle back get the other one you've got to be careful because you overshoot I don't know why you can't click on it you know when you can I can click on that one right in a distance there I'm getting that that's 273 light seconds away and this one was like right next to me but you couldn't click on it until you're right there for some reason or other so uh, that's it we got both of those now then uh, on to the next planets in the system and then on on to the next system and just keep doing it um, one other thing I think I forgot to show you um, in Becky's list where to sell your data um, when you've been doing it for about three hours every three or four hours maybe fly to one of these systems so where has it gone there uh, it's not what I'm looking for Lost it here. Uh, Alioth, uh, Yoru, Euribia. So go there and find these the, where these um, 
uh, factions are in in charge. You can't go to Sirius because you need a permit to get in there. So what you do, you fly to a system next to Sirius and you can use any third party tool or just do it randomly. And hopefully uh, you'll find a Sirius corporation in charge of one of the stations, not in Sirius, you know, in one of the surrounding uh, systems and you can sell the data to them. And then they'll give you uh, the Sirius permit and you need those permits, Yoru, Euribia, Alio, because there's engineers there. So it's just one reason to go there. It gets you instant maximum rep with the uh, factions when you sell them, you know, about 20, 30 millions worth. And then they give you the permission, the permit, and it saves you running loads of missions for hours to try and get a permit when you want to do the engineers. So, so that, that's it really. And you could also try selling some at Felicity Farsier's um, place, uh, wherever that was, can't remember now, uh, no it's gone, and Elvira Martuk, that used to get you straight up to level 5 for the engineering by selling them data, but I, I think that's changed now in the um, version 3 patch, so makes no odds, but if you've got the invite to go and see them, just go there and drop off that data. And while you're there, you know, you might you might already have collected some materials or whatever to, um, you know, improve your frame shift drive a little bit and jump further. You never know. Um, so that's it, really. Just work your way through those lists. You can either do this one or the ED Tools one. This one makes no difference. Just keep working through those until you've got as much money as you want. So you get bored with it or whatever you want to do. It's just a way of making money. Not very interesting, but there you are. So I um, hope you enjoyed that, and I'll maybe see you in another video. Oh, one last thing I forgot. I always forget something. Um, you can stop anywhere. Um, I'm just in the middle of space now. There's nobody here. So when you've uh, finished your day, just log off where you are and when you log back on you'll be back where you started don't i wouldn't land on a planet or go near a planet or anywhere just do it in the middle of space like this so here we go just like this save and exit to menu and then uh when you log back on you just carry on save and exit Lastly, I'm adding a little bit of general advice about traveling when you have to travel a long way. I'm going to open up my galaxy map. Now, from time to time, you have to travel a very long way. Um, let's say, for whatever reason, you wanted to go down to Maya. So you can plot your route as normal, and you'll see it's many, many jumps. All these things are damaged stations. Where, where are we? We're up here somewhere. So we're zigzagging here. It's probably about 20 jumps. So um, you're going to be scooping all along the way. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we don't go through uh, more than two or three jumps in a row without there being any scoopable stars. And you do that and this one here by setting a filter so we're on security at the moment but we change that to start class there it is and I've already done it but um, it's these top ones from D down to M you want lit and take off all the others and then add apply filter to root on the last one and what that means is it'll Whenever it's plotting a route, it'll only go through these star types unless it can avoid it. There's times when there's such a big jump from one to the next that it can't avoid, but have to sort of uh, jump to a, a different one, one of these ones uh, just to be able to complete the route. So look out for that. Uh, but generally, if you've got a jump range of about 20 years, you should be able to... Um, uh, get to your destination without running out of fuel and going to places where you can't scoop. Um, but if you've got a low jump 
range that can still happen. Um, yeah. Uh, right, so that that's how to um, scoop along the way. The other thing is, I did mention it before, but just going to go over it again. Whenever you're travelling more than about, I don't know, five jumps or so, maybe ten jumps, always switch off your shields. So first of all, you put four pips to your uh, engines, two to systems, because you're not going to be fighting anybody. Take off, take your power distributor, so you find, find this in, in, in modules. So take your shield generator offline there by two clicks, take your cargo hatch off, power distributor, switch that off. If you're carrying any weapons, switch them off. Anything but the bare basics that you need for uh, running your ship. You're obviously going to need your thrusters. You're going to need life support. You're going to need your fuel scoop. You're going to need your frame shift drive. I think you need your sensors and these other things. Don't take any power. But if you're using uh, uh, anything at all that uses power, but you don't actually need for travelling, switch them off. And that will let you run much cooler when you're scooping, so you can scoop for longer uh, between the jumps. Because uh, if you're jumping long jumps, you might need to uh, scoop for much longer than what we're doing here. So uh, that's general advice on how to how to travel. It works for in any ship, um, and uh, just makes it easier. When you arrive at your destination, uh, when you uh, land at the last star. Then you can switch on the things that you need on, and so that they're all recharged and ready for when you come to your station or landing or whatever you want to do. And, of course, you don't want to switch your shields off if you're carrying anything. So if you're doing long-range smuggling or long-range carrying passengers or any long-range missions, don't forget there's always a chance of interdiction. So you might want to leave your shields on. But your engines and uh, your pips are already set in the ideal position for escaping. So submit from the interdiction, boost, and then uh, boost again as soon as you can, and then engage your frameshift drive. And uh, you should be clear of the NPC, ready for the next jump or whatever. And you won't, hopefully you won't see him again. So I hope you found that useful as well.